Howdy y'all. This is the final video in my three video series on uh, taking a file from SketchUp into vCarve Pro. Uh, in this video we'll uh, import the DXF file, we'll clean up the vectors, get rid of some duplicates, and uh, then generate, uh, calculate tool paths, then generate and save G-code. So, stick around. Okay, we're here in vCarve Pro and we're ready to create a new file. So, I'll go ahead and do so. Now, when I create a new file, um, I try to have my outside dimensions either known or something similar in mind. What I mean by that is, uh, on this I want to cut uh, a bookshelf about 24 inches wide. Now, uh, we did not scale the um, drawing in SketchUp, I figured we would do that here. and it could, Because it's relatively easy to do. But for my job setup, um, I want to add an inch to my 24 inch wide bookshelf and as it turns out that's already in there. And I'm not sure how wide the shelf is versus the brackets. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring this up to 18. If that's not right, I can uh, come back later on and change it. My thickness of material is going to be 3 quarter inch and I'm going to Z my material from the top of the material. Uh, set my Z axis rather at the top of the material. And I use uh, XY datum at the bottom left corner. Uh, that's entirely up to you. Uh, no offset. I work in inches and I'm going to keep everything else as is. So there's our new job. Now um, from here we're going to go to the file menu and import our vectors. And here we see the file that we saved so I'll double click that to import and it imports the vectors highlighted. Now zooming out you can see that oh boy is that a big shelf. So with it highlighted what we'll go ahead and do is we'll resize that and come down here to select object size. Oh yeah that's almost a four foot wide shelf and that's just a bit much for me. So I'm going to take that down to 24 inches wide. My link XY is checked and that's going to give us a new Y height of 15.09 inches. So well within our workpiece. So we'll hit apply. We will then close that window. And now I want to align those vectors to the center of the material. And that is great. So now, let me zoom in on my selection here. If we want to, what we could do is we could go back into uh, job setup and change the size of our material. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that now because I think we can get away with a 16 inch wide piece of material. And I'll come back and select these and align it again. Okay. Those of you who know me know that I'm cheap, and this is just another example. Okay, with the DXF imported, we know that we're going to have open vectors. But what we do need to check for is we're going to have to check for um, duplicate vectors. So, I'll right-click, come down here to select all duplicate vectors. And there are some vectors were highlighted. I'm going to go ahead and hit delete on those and get rid of those. Now I'm going to right click again just in case and select all duplicate vectors. Okay, it says no vectors in design. Now there have been times in playing with DXF files that I've come up with some, uh, I call them ghost vectors, in that they don't show up as a duplicate but they're still there. So I'm going to check for them by just clicking here and as you can see, I've got the pink highlight, but I've also got black lines there. So I think I may have ghost vectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit my cursor up button down on my keyboard. And yep, sure enough, there they go. So what this is showing me now is I've got one closed vector up here that's being moved. And then I've got a bunch of 
open or separate closed vectors. Uh, I'm going to get rid of those by going from left to right surrounding and hit delete. Now let's check and see if I've got the same thing down here. Do I? I don't know. It's not. Okay, if I click over here, I'm getting surrounded. So let's, yep, sure enough. And here I've got a bunch of separate vectors. So delete those. Now we'll check here. Sure enough. So I will delete those. Now we get to go back and place these, which is fine. So I will select these two, scoot them back over. That's fine there. And scoot this back down here. And that'll do nicely there. Uh, for those of you who know me, you know that I'm a little bit cheap, so I try to conserve as much material as possible in this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rotate this vector here, spin it around just 90 degrees, as close to 90 as I can get, good enough, and I will move it over here, kind of tighten it up, close, do the same thing here, and all I just did was double click on the vector, and I'm going to rotate this one around this way, 90 degrees, then drag it over here and bring it up close, but not so close that my bit won't go in between these two. Click off to the side, and now I'm ready. So just to check and make sure, let's go ahead and make certain that these are all closed vectors by going here. It is one closed vector. Whoops, didn't need to do that. There is one closed vector, and then we'll highlight here. That is also one closed vector. All right, now we're ready to go. We're ready to calculate tool paths. Because these are just simple profiles, I'm going to go ahead and select all go over here to my tool pathing tab and I want to cut an outside profile. I want to select a quarter inch end mill. Oops, shouldn't have double clicked it. I for keep forgetting I'm doing a video. And I'm going to start at a feed rate of 60 and I'm going to do a plunge rate of 20. Everything else looks good so I will use that. Um, I'm going to cut all the way through the material, so we'll change that to 75, uh, 0 0.75. Uh, passes, I'm going to go ahead and bump that up a bit. I'll go 10 passes. I would much rather take shallower cuts and be able to bump up the feed rate than take a bunch of deep cuts and possibly get a, uh, and not only have to run a slower feed rate, but possibly get a, a rotten looking uh, finished product. We're cutting to the outside. I'm going to cut climb. I'm not going to use my vector start point, so I want it to be able to finish this one and then lift over and start this one, then lift up and go to this one if that's the way it decides to. I am going to do a separate last pass in my tolerance with an allowance, excuse me, of 0 0.01. Um, I don't use tabs uh, for this. Since it's pretty big, I will use tabs. I'm going to create 3D tabs. And I will add tabs. Uh, let's see, let's move this one down to about here. We'll add one about here. And then I like to put them on flat surfaces that can be routed or sanded easy. I don't I tend not to put my tabs in corners. So with that in mind I'll put the, another one here, move this one down towards the center a bit, move this one over here, put one here. And after I said I prefer not to put them in uh, curved surfaces, 
I will go ahead and put one on the center here and another one on the center here and the reason for that is because I have an oscillating spindle sander and I can do a inside sanding cut real easy or sanding real easy okay close um, my tab length I want them to be a quarter of an inch long and um, I think an eighth of an inch now I'm gonna go ahead and make them a quarter of an inch tall as well as a matter of fact I'll go ahead and make these a half inch just simply because I keep forgetting this is a 24 inch long piece so I need a more substantial tab there I will however add ramps a uh, smooth ramp over a distance of two inches I think that'll be okay and I'm going to name this profile cutout calculate and there are our tool paths so we'll go ahead and preview those and sure enough that looks pretty good to me with these tabs in place that'll keep that from coming out and the same here now I've had a couple of questions about 3D tool paths what exactly does that do now let's go ahead and zoom in here and uh, we'll show you what that does well wrong button there we go if you look 3D tool path is kind of pyramid shaped I don't know if you can see that or make that out but it's roughly pyramid shaped the bit will come along and cut in whichever direction see climb cutting so the bit will come along in this direction here and rather than stopping and lifting up in Z to the height of my tab moving over and then plunging back down the software will actually start increasing the Z height as it comes up to the height of the tab and then start decreasing down the other side making kind of a pyramid shaped tab uh, that's so the uh, router doesn't stop moving in that axis it speeds up the cutting process only a little bit but enough to matter so that's why I use 3d tabs now I have enough room to put a screw here 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 and here to hold my material down so I'm gonna go ahead and call this good from here what we'll do is we'll close and put a check mark over here into profile cutout and save my toolpath I will save it to file and name I normally put in the size of the bit in my G code So I've got a uh, quarter inch straight end mill profile cutout. And that's the folder I'll save it in. Boom. There we go. We are finished. And that's it. So in this third video, we've imported our vectors. We have cleaned our vectors up. We've uh, calculated tool paths, generated G code, and we're ready to cut out a piece that was probably never meant to exist in the real world so that's um, oh no that's not it there is one more step which is very very important what we've just done is we've saved g-code but we have not saved this project so if we want to visit it again sometime maybe cut out another bookshelf if we decide we need more we'll need to save this project so we don't lose everything we just drew so file save as and I will call it 24 inch wide bookshelf there we go now we're all set now we're through <laughs> Well, if you got anything at all out of this video or out of the series in general, uh, please consider giving me a thumbs up down below. 
whether you do that or not I'd like to thank you very much for watching uh, I know it's been a long series three videos three fairly long videos but hopefully this will help some of you out and um, uh, get you moving on uh, using SketchUp uh, as your CAD so thank you very much for watching take care y'all